Fluoride is safe and effective, and it's one of the most inexpensive ways to really cut down on dental decay. Anything we can do to help prevent cavities on children, I think, is very important. Absolutely, fluoride is safe. It's effective. Fluoridation of community water is extremely safe and extremely effective in preventing tooth decay. Science is on the side of fluoride being safe and effective. There is no controversy about this in the scientific community. If it's such a simple issue, how is it that it's still going on after half a century? I remember it being debated yeah, well, 30 years ago. And, and it months. continues to debate. But just because we've been doing something 50 years doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. If public health officials knew then what they know now, would we have fluoride? Would it be added to our drinking water? Well, today a coalition of scientists, dentists, and doctors are taking action to stop fluoridation until it is proven safe. As I began my quest looking into the history of fluoride, I found what seemed to be a tangled web of information. While we agree that there are a number of different players in this game and paths to explore regarding the history on fluoride, for the sake of time, we will attempt to be as concise as possible. In the last part of the 18th century, a new kind of revolution was taking hold of the modern world. This was not a political, social, or cultural revolution. This was an economic revolution, and unfortunately for us, the byproducts were some of the most toxic pollutants humanity had ever seen. And one of the most venomous pollutants of them all was fluoride. By 1930, the aluminum industry was the biggest polluter of fluoride. In America, only one company was in the aluminum business. The Aluminum Company of America otherwise known as Alcoa. Ironically enough, during that time, the U.S. Public Health Services was under the direct jurisdiction of the U.S. Treasury Secretary, Andrew W. Mellon. It just so happened that Mellon was a founder and major stockholder of Alcoa. He was also the founder of the Mellon Institution, an industry-funded research institute that was notorious for giving industry the scientific data it needed to defend itself. The Mellon Institute published some of the key evidence that supported the effectiveness of fluoride in fighting tooth decay. It was Dr. Gerald Cox, who also worked at the Mellon Institute, that made the first proposal to artificially fluoridate our public water supplies. Although widely debated, the official human experiments began in Grand Rapids, Michigan on January 25, 1945, as they were the first to publicly fluoridate their water supply. Most people in America are persuaded that everybody fluoridates their water living in a town like Albany or Long Island or somewhere. But the vast majority of the population of the world does not drink fluoridated water. Most of the countries do not fluoridate their water. Only about 30. Why don't you own commercial real estate? Yes, you. Why don't you own commercial? The countries now that have banned the use of fluoride are China, Austria, Belgium, Finland, Germany, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, the Netherlands, Hungary, and Japan. These, all these countries have said that fluoride, number one, is ineffective and toxic and should not be used. We are still using it. There's something wrong here. I think it's time that uh, we become aware and do something about it. There is a recent lawsuit in Maryland, it's a federal lawsuit, a woman who believed the medical establishment at the time when her daughter was an infant, she gave her daughter 90% of her diet intake of, of water was this chlorinated And so the daughter grew up with severe fluorosis. To get that correct, the restoration is about $100,000 that they can't bear with it. So they are suing Nestle and Glover. So putting it in a baby bottle when the child doesn't have any visible teeth, there is no way on God's green earth that can have anything except a negative impact on that child. But they sell it in the grocery store as baby's first water. I've seen that for years. How do we educate women to not buy this for their babies? And this is why we wanted the warning for infants, because they're the most at risk. They drink their weight in water within two or three days. If you and I did that, we'd be drinking 22 liters a day. I mean, it just goes back to the whole of these regulatory agencies that are supposed to, you know, be kind of looking out for our best interests. And as you know, they're not. I say they have a duty to warn. They have a duty to warn you. 
Not one manufacturer of formula says, by the way, don't use the tap water. Women, infant, and children, WIC program. We contacted them. They refused to tell mothers not to use the tap water. And you know what she said? It would damage the fluoridation program. Fluoride is safe and effective, and it's one of the most inexpensive ways to really cut down on dental decay. Fluoride is safe and effective. Well, there's a study from 20 years ago showing infant mortality was higher in Florida communities. Is that why? I don't know. Why didn't they do a follow-up study? I think that would be interesting to know. Children have died, yet. You know. There's been a case in a child who swallowed this, the dentist left the room, the parents didn't know, the kid swallowed it, had to be rushed to hospital, they couldn't save them down. So yeah, it's very toxic substance. There's no question about it. Is that the kind of stuff that a responsible parent would be putting in their child's hand? FDA in 1997 required manufacturers of toothpaste to put this warning label on it. The same as you'd have on a loaded 38 caliber pistol. Keep out of reach of children and only use a pea-sized amount, which is about the same amount that would be a, pin, a bottle of water. And if that amount is swallowed, call the poison control center or seek professional help immediately. So if I drink a bottle of water, should I call the poison control center too? This is just insane. So this is what two different organizations say. One says, don't swallow it. Why did they put that on there? They put that on there because there were 10,000 calls a year to the poison control centers from children made ill by swallowed toothpaste. 10,000 calls, and you know for every call, there's five that didn't call. And so, and there are only poison control centers in half the states. So that means 100,000 children are made ill by swallowed toothpaste. It's insane to put a deadly poison in a child's hand and say, go brush and be sure and spit out, Johnny. Florida has been a slow process of introduction into the dental profession where it's commonplace for us to consider Florida as a thing to do to help decay. You know, no, statistics have shown us that Florida is not working. It's very toxic to you and can cause everything from cancer to depression. So, yeah, it's a serious issue.